Welcome to the automated reporting in ENCODE GlyphWorks. Uh, my name's Varinda and I'm an application engineer uh, working for ENCODE based here in the UK. So I'm just going to give you a, a quick overview of ENCODE reporting, GlyphWorks reporting. So here's our agenda today. Uh, we're going to start off with a very quick start guide to GlyphWorks for those not familiar with GlyphWorks before. Uh, we're going to look at uh, display objects. What kind of things can we create uh, reports with? And then again, we're going to dive into a, another simple demo where we're going to create an actual template for a report and see it in action. Uh, the other thing we're going to touch upon, as well as the uh, plots you can put on the page and graphs, uh, we're going to talk about metadata, and I'll, uh, I'll let you know what metadata is and how we can use it. Then we'll move on to creating multi-section reports. So well, what if you had various sections, like you wanted a header page or uh, a center section, how we can do multiple sections. Then finally, a quick summary, and hopefully we'll have some time for questions. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the agenda. But before we start that, I'm going to give you a quick company overview for those not familiar with HBK and Prensia, just to uh, give you an idea of who we are. Prensia is one of the uh, one of the uh, software divisions of HBK. HBK consists of B and K, which are the, uh, the the noise and vibration shaker table people, and it also consists of HBM that do instrumentation and sensors. As I mentioned, Prensier is the software side of the business, and the goal of Prensier is to help engineers deliver durable and reliable products and avoid the cost of unexpected failures. If you can imagine uh, something failing in the field, uh, those can significantly mount up. You weren't expecting those. So in terms of the uh, the software brands under Prensia, we have Encode and Reliasoft. Encode for fatigue and durability, Reliasoft for reliability engineering tools. We offer training and education courses. So if you're looking to learn about designing for reliability or durability. We have courses available for those. We have fatigue theories. And for those people who already have the software, we offer hands-on software courses. That way you can make the, uh, the best use of the software you have available. We also offer services. So if you're looking to predict the fatigue of a component, uh, one of the important parameters in there is material data. And we can provide material testing facilities and give you that very important uh, piece of the jigsaw. We offer solutions for design, development, and test. And the other, the other part is the uh, solutions for asset management. So if you want to monitor a large plant or uh, applications like that, uh, we have tools that enable you to do that. And that's primarily on the ReliSoft side, reliability engineering. So here's a here's the overview of our tools available from ReliSoft and Encode. Left-hand side, all the ReliSoft tools. I'm not going to go into any great detail, but just a quick run through some of the Encode uh, tools and applications we have. We have Design Life. So if you're in the work, if you're working in the CAE world, then you can take FE models and apply realistic loads to those FE models to uh, do life predictions. If you collect lots of data, lots of test data, test track or rig type of data, then GlyphWorks is a product where you can take those squiggly measured lines and make some kind of sense out of them. Vibesys is our the uh, Vibesys is our uh, NVH side of the uh, offering. Uh, so we've got tools for vibration and acoustics analysis. So 
if you're looking at rotating machinery or looking at uh, noise type measurements, that's the uh, that's the product for that. We also have Akira. Akira is our web-based portal to all these tools as well, and also the new Enco DS analysis engine that's in there. Automation is another product. So if you if you have a large scale test and you want to monitor that for many months, many, many years, perhaps, then automation allows us to collect data, automatically analyze it and make the uh, information available globally. Today, we're going to focus on CliffWorks and just look at one small aspect of CliffWorks and that's the automated reporting. So moving on to section two, what can we what can we display on reports? Here's a, a typical example, typical page that you may uh, produce. What we can do, we can easily summarize data collected. So you've collected lots and lots of test files off your test track or test rig. How do we summarize these very quickly? We can quickly create report templates by dragging and dropping the data onto a studio glyph and simply pressing the run button. We can process large volumes of data. So automatically processing multiple files, multiple data sets with one click. We can display existing metadata or we can display uh, glyph generated metadata. I'll talk about metadata in a, in a short while. The, uh, the, the process, it's, it's standalone, it's self-contained in Glyphworks. You don't need any external applications to start creating reports. And we can offer multiple export formats. As I've said, the, uh, the, the, the reports, they are built on a piece of paper. So you get a blank canvas to start off with. And then you can start adding display objects onto those pages. So they're highly configurable. You can drop objects on, resize them, change the properties, change the look and feel. And each page can contain any number of display objects. Uh, we can have multiple pages uh, added. So we can have multiple pages in a report. Uh, and also these objects can be displaying different types of information. So here we have a, a, a typical time series plot showing you the original data. And then we got various analysis plots showing you more detailed information. Types of displays we can have, objects, time series. We can have multi-column information. So this is multi-column information that you can import from Excel or any other uh, piece of hardware that's generating the data, CSV files, histograms, text files, text boxes, metadata, tabular displays. So a rich variety of objects that you can use to start creating your reports. So here we see a, a time series plot. So this is how you would quickly eyeball your data to make sure there's no strange features in there. We could then take that, analyze it, produce some results. So we can produce histogram plots. In this case, we have a rain flow pot, plot showing you the range and mean. We can also put uh, FE plots on there. So if you're working in the, C uh, working in the CAE world, there's uh, FE plots that you can put there and apply realistic loads to give you fatigue life information or, uh, or vibration type analysis. Rotating machinery, we have a, a waterfall plot. So as you can see, a wide range of plots. At the bottom here, we have tabular information. We can create tables of information. So we can just focus on the information that's of interest, that's relevant to us. 
So I'm going to first of all start off Cliffworks and dive straight into it. So let me just uh, fire up the application. So this is this is the interface, and I'm just going to run Glyphworks. As you can see, the we have the other applications docked on the left hand side. So here in the available data window, that's where all our files come. There can be different types of files, different uh, categories of files, video files, and our workspace is in the middle. On the right hand side. We have all our uh, glyphs or functions that we're going to use. So here we have lots of different ways of getting data into a flow. And then we've got some standard housekeeping functions. And then we've got our basic palette of uh, signal processing tools. So on the right hand side, all the tools that we need. And as we can see at the bottom, we have objects, different types of displays that we can use inside the flow and also on the studio display. So on the left hand side, as you can see, we've got some data files we can drill down. This is a, an ATV12 file. It's got five channels in. We simply drag it onto the display. We can, we can see that this is a live glyph and it's got uh, data in. So we can scroll through, we can zoom in and out, and we can use that to check our data files. And we get a, an icon, short icon appear that allows us to shortcut, quickly access all those features. So let's do something with it. Let's look at the frequency content of the uh, these signals. So we can do a basic DSP. We can drop that on here connect the pipe up so data is flowing from this glyph into the frequency spectrum glyph and then what we can do is go to our display palette and drop an xy display glyph in there okay so that's our process we can run it and as you can see it's done the frequency analysis for all the for all the different channels and we can extend that. We can go and grab another glyph. So let's say we want to do some rain flow cycle counting. And we can drag the rain flow glyph. If we double click on the glyph, we go into the properties of the glyph. So this is how it's going to behave and how it's going to analyze the data. So if we start off with eight channels or oh, sorry, eight bins. This is setting the resolution of the analysis. And again, we can go to the display and drop and drop a display on. Let's just add uh, let's just add something else on. We want to see the actual numbers. We can drop a data values display. And if we connect that to there. We should see a table of numbers. Okay, so I can rerun the process. So we have frequency results. We have uh, what the uh, wrong type of display. Let me just change. Let me just change that. I can delete that. I can go back to my displays. In this case, for the rain flower, I want a histogram display. So I can connect my histogram. So there's the histogram results. We can rotate it and quickly scroll through all the results for the different channels. So as you can see, you can quickly create lots of information. And what uh, we what we see some customers do is when they want to capture these results is actually go into the glyph. They, they can copy the information to the clipboard and then they paste it into something else just to get a copy of the results. As you can see, if you wanted to do that for all the channels in the, in the case of the histogram, you, you could simply spend a lot of time simply cutting and pasting. And again, here we've got lots of Lots of results. This is our 
eight by eight matrix that we've created with the uh, rainflow histogram. And these are the numbers in the boxes. And these are, this is just scrolling through different channels. So what is, what is the solution? We can generate lots and lots of plots. And if we had to copy and paste into different applications, we'd, uh, we'd never get anything done. And um, this is where we're going to switch and go into the next part, which is adding the studio display. So what we want to do is create a, uh, a report. And this is what studio displays allows us to do. So we, we start off with a, with a blank canvas. And we can say, right, we want to add some objects onto there. So we can go in and insert, uh, let's have a, a time series plot. We want to have an XY time series. So there's our plot. And we can pick that object up. We can double click on it and go into the properties so we can control how it looks and behaves. Let's just say we want one channel. So there's our one channel plot. Let's just reposition that and just re resize it. So by dropping that one object on, we can see that we've created a little tab on this uh, studio display glyph. This is how we connect it to the rest of the project. So any data that we want dropping on here, we can connect it to this pad. And if we drop a, another a few items on there, so we can have an XY display, insert XY display for our frequency results. So we can drop a, a histogram. Again, we can resize it, position position things to get them to the right uh, size. And let's just drop a, another another one in there, a histogram display. So this is how you can build up your page. You can drop all these things on. We can customize the report by adding graphics and images on there. So it looks a bit, uh, looks a bit bare, lots of technical information, doesn't, doesn't look very pretty. But if we insert, we can add pictures in here. So I go to picture and I can pull up a, a header image. And it's given me the option to link to it if it's a big image or I can just simply embed it in the file. So there's, here's my header image. All I need to do is just simply resize it. That's my, uh, that's my title. Let's just move this up a bit. As you can see, this is the part where the uh, creativity in you can come out. You can spend a lot of time tidying up reports. But in essence, we just drop things on and we then connect to those object. So if we hover the mouse, you can see the blue tab, which represents time series data. Information is going to fall in there. So if we connect that to that, and then we want the frequency spectrum results on the page as well. And the frequency spectrum, we want to drop into this tab. So if we hover the mouse, we can see which one. So it's this one going on to the frequency spectrum. And then the rainflow plot, we want to drop in into there. OK, let's just uh, shuffle these up a bit, make room for a table, because uh, one thing I'd like to see is the table of results as well. So we can move this up. Table of results. So here's our information in the table that we want to get on here. We need to, we need to modify this. So if we go into the properties, we need to 
be able to export these results out. And we can export them out onto an output pipe. Uh, if you have a look, we can select output pipe. And what we get is another tab appear. So this information that's in here, we can now feed downstream and use elsewhere. So we could we could manipulate and do some calculations on there. But the purposes of our report, we are simply going to insert a table display. And by adding a, a table display, we we also create uh, a tab on the side that's compatible for this type of information. Okay, so we can create there's our table. Right, so that's those are all the different plots and things. Uh, what we can what we can do is now add other bits of information that may be in the file. So one thing we'd like to know is what the file name is that all this information is coming on, coming from. So again, we can insert, we can insert a text box in this case, and we can say file name. Now we we want the file name to change depending on what files we drop in the input. So we can we can enter that as a, a text information. So again, by dropping a, a text box on, we see we have another tab appear. And what we can do is connect that tab to the data stream again. So here's our original history, time history that will contain the file name. And then when we go into it, we can go and modify it. We can pick up some metadata. I briefly mentioned metadata before, but we're gonna we're gonna be accessing this in, information now. Metadata is data about the data. So if we drill down into these, we can see at the test level there will be something that contains the file name of the file it's processing. So. We select the metadata and we do OK. Now it's replaced. It's replaced that variable with the actual thing it's found in the file. So let me let me just add add one more bit of information and the other thing might be useful is the date in which the report was created. That's always useful. So we can right click, insert. We can add another text box. And now we can say date equals. And we're going to be using a, a built in function here. And it's simply called date. It takes a parameter. It takes a number of parameters, so I'm going to use the option one on the date, which just simply presses the, uh, simply uh, prints out the date. There are different formats on the date, so we'll have date, and then we can say time equals, uh, can say bell. So this is accessing a, a built-in function as well. So if we do OK, we see, let's, let's position the date at the bottom. One thing I like to do is when we have a text box is generally get, go into the general options, turn off the box and turn off the auto fit and word wrap. And then what we can do is then go into the text and change the size of the text. It gives you a lot more control. So we said 15 points. That's the font size. You can see now we've got a, a nice big readable date and time. So it'll date and time the uh, report as it's generated. And we've seen how we can pull out metadata here.
we can we can tabulate this page with lots of metadata. That's our report format report uh, laid out. Next thing we want to do is we specify how we want to export it. So we go on to the properties, go on, on to the advanced options, and by default, it's not set to export, but we can export it. And we can say we want to output all the channels. So every channel it comes across, it wants to create a, a separate page for that. There's various ways of incrementing the uh, channels as it's going through them. Export type. So now we can select which, which of the exports we want. And I'm going to go with a, my usual default is uh, we want to create a, a PDF document. Now we want to give it a file name. We could, we could type the file name in there and it's going to create the report with that file. But if you want to make this generic, you want to be able to automatically rename the files. And the way we can do this again is to go into the metadata. So here we're going to pick some metadata and I'm looking for the the name of the file. That's the name of the file. So it pulls that in as a variable. And all I'm going to do is put underscore report under there. So it's going to distinguish the file, the, the data file, from the report file. So we can, uh, there's a various couple of options when it's overwrite it's not going to ask me so now we have our report if we run that if we run that now hopefully this all right so file already exists let me just uh, change the options in here Overwrite. So if there's an existing file that I've run, I can simply choose to overwrite it. So as you can see, the, the red dot there indicates it's, it's writing the file out. If I have a look on my hard disk, and we see that there's a, a file that's just been created, a PDF file. Let me just bring bring that up onto the page. I'm gonna drag this PDF. So it's it's opened it up in the uh, PDF reader, as you can see, if I change the view, change the zoom to fit height, there's our page that uh, we've just created. So it's given us the file name. This is metadata that we've pulled out. It's timestamped the file. It's got our table, a nice little pretty logo. And if we scroll down, we can see that uh, it's got it's got uh, information for all the other channels. So I just needed to just needed to change the number of channels that were displayed on there. But uh, the rest of it, you can see there's five pages created for the five different channels we've thrown at it. OK, so that that is a very quick <coughs> overview of how we can create uh, reports and pages of information. We're going to switch back to the presentation now and just give you a bit more detail on the uh, metadata that I've just spoken about. So metadata, what, are you, what is metadata? Why is, why is it so important? If you had a plot that looks like this, it's a nice squiggly line, you've collected 
you've collected something on, on a test rig or from a test rack, uh, you know it goes up to 496 and all the way down to minus 790. That's, that's all good information, but what it doesn't tell you is what units the, these are in. This could be, this could be kilonewtons. This could be pounds. What's the, what's the units on the X scale? Is that seconds? Is that number of points? So we, we need more information than just the data that we're collecting. So we need what the X scale is. Is that in seconds? We need to know the Y scale units. We need to know what channel we're looking at. So metadata is data about the data. So it's all these additional things, all this additional information that you need to describe what, uh, what you've collected. So metadata examples, it will tell you what the, the maximum level you've reached in a file, what the minimum level is, what the sample rate. And this metadata already exists in the uh, data file that you've collected with your hardware, your hardware will already automatically put a lot of this metadata in there. And the thing to note is that metadata can exist at two different uh, levels. One's at the uh, test level, one's at the channel level. Test level information refers or is applicable to all the channels. Channel is channel specific. And the thing to note is analysis glyphs can also create and add additional metadata in there. So as you start your analysis flow, uh, you'll you'll have you'll have uh, file loaded in. That'll have some metadata in. These analysis glyphs are also adding to that stream of data. So there's a rich flow, rich stream of uh, information that you have access to. So as I've just mentioned, metadata consists at the test level. That's applicable to all these things. And each channel has got its own metadata. Things like number of channels in a file, what the vehicle is, what the test condition is, what the instrumentation settings. A lot of this information can can already exist. And you as the analyst can also add additional information that you can bring out onto reports. So things like channel, channel one, max, min, means, all the, all the useful, usual sets of information. As I mentioned, analysis glyphs can also add metadata to this data stream. So here's our data going in, into a strain life glyph. So if you've got some strain channels, you're going to do a fatigue life prediction using this glyph. You're going to select what material, it is, what material it's made of, what the various properties. And if we look with the, the metadata display, that gives us an insight, gives us a view into all the different metadata that exists at any particular point in the flow. So here at channel three, and also that information will exist at channel four, five, six, and seven. We see the name of the glyph that we've been using and properties. And what that will do is record all the different options and parameters you have used to do that fatigue calculation. Then the next group of information it puts in, it's got the strain life results section. So this will give you the uh, the duration of the test, the life in hours, the max and mins. So all this all this information is now available for you to place on the screen, place on your report or blank canvas to be able to use. So how do we access that information? As I've mentioned, as you've seen, the metadata, we can access it at the test level. You just point to where, where it is at the test. And there may be something called engineer in there. And by adding hashes at the beginning and end, we're kind of making it into a variable. So every time the studio display sees something like this, it will replace it 
and put in wherever, whatever is existing in that file at that time. Again, if we want to access some results, uh, in this case, we want to see what the results for channel one are. We want to see the strain life one results, the life in particular. There's, there's lots of other parameters we can pull up, pull up. Uh, if we want to access the life, this is, this is what we can do. And we don't have to know all these different terms. We can search for them in the tree. There's a, there's a metadata pick option where you can uh, look through and simply copy this information on. So when you want to bring it up onto the test report, we can uh, put some uh, put some labels on test report, project equals, and then we can access this information, put the variable name in. So here, channel, channel number, channel title, channel units, pulling out the max and me, uh, max and units. Uh, it's going to replace all this information at, at runtime. So now we have a test report, it pulls out the project number, and it replaces all this metadata information with what, what it actually finds. Uh, the other thing we can do that we haven't really touched upon is the metadata items can be created using the metadata calculator. So if you know the maximum and minimum in a file, and then on the report you want to show the range of the numbers, we can use a metadata calculator to calculate and place additional uh, metadata either at the test level or we can calculate it channel by channel. So here's a, a, a metadata display and we can, from that vast information or vast flow of metadata that's flowing through the analysis process, we can pick out certain key bits of information and put them on a, in a table, and this is how we can get the table across. There's lots of built-in functions that you can uh, utilize. You don't have to create everything from scratch. There's lots of mathematical operators, all the usual sine, cosine, uh, logical operators that are available. String manipulation. So if you want to change or modify titles, uh, there's a whole group of functions. We've seen how we can use the date and time just to simply stamp the date and time on a report. Uh, as an example, we use date one that just simply gave the, uh, the date and month, year. Uh, if we choose another option, this one gives us a little bit more detail. So as you can see, there are various uh, different ways of displaying the date and also the, uh, the time as well. If you look at the, uh, the table here, it's, it's going down to X number of different places. Now, you, kinda, you, you, you may kind of lose the information. You may want to throw away the, uh, all these decimal places because they don't really mean anything. Uh, what we can do in that case is we can use one of the built-in functions. So if our maximum value on a particular channel was 2,713 plus all these decimal places, we can use this format function to change the uh, floating point format on this value. And this will return that to uh, string in two decimal places. So when you put it onto your report, it'll be a much neater, tidier looking display. So that again, just being able to modify the information. Quickly moving on to multi-section reports. What we've seen here is a, a single type of report where it's uh, continuous. However many channels you throw at it, it will give you the same number of channels. So Studio Display allows you to loop for all channels in a file, and we can define how the define the glyph properties define how those channels are incremented, what the export options are. So the example we've just seen, we've dropped in a, a data file. 
we've created a, a simple template and we can generate a multi-page report. We can, we can do something uh, a little bit uh, more sophisticated and create multi-section, multiple reports. And the way we do this is we can have multiple studio displays in the report. So what we can do is have a, a header template. So this will create a page where it might summarize the results for all of the channels. And it outputs a, in, in my case, it, it was a PDF document. And then later on in the flow, somewhere later when the first part is created, we can then have another studio display with a different layout and this can create the additional pages. And we set the properties of this to append to an existing file. So it will append these pages it creates and add them onto the header page. So this is creating one file with multiple sections, multiple uh, analysis types, and you could add others if you wanted to. If you wanted some appendices, you could do uh, another studio display built in, all combining to create a single file with multi-sections in there, in there. It also means that you can create multiple files, so multiple reports targeting different people. So you could have a, a CAE report generated that's applicable to your CAE people. And then you could have a, another report that's got information that's relevant to your test, test guys. So at the same time, you can very quickly report these to, diff, to report, create reports for different target audiences. In terms of the uh, the export capability, you've you've already seen there's a drop down menu. Uh, we can export pictures as PDFs or uh, PowerPoints. My my preference is PDF files, and we can quickly generate lots of PDFs. Uh, we've seen the op we've seen these options in use where we export and set the metadata as the item and that will automatically replace it and create the appropriate file or output. We're, uh, oh. Just to summarize then, we can quickly create automated uh, reports. We can, we can create multiple reports. So, so we have the option of summarizing large quantities of data. If you've collected 50 test runs on a test rack, you can you can quickly come in, drop all those 50 tests on the input glyph, press the run button, and within minutes, you can create 50 summary files that may be looking at the quality of the data, maybe looking at the uh, some basic stats and information that you can quickly distribute uh, to your uh, to your customers. We can create single section, multi-section, multi-page reports at the click of a click of a button. And as you can see, there are numerous plot types and objects for visualizing data. Uh, the, the other key thing is that we can access metadata as well and pull these up onto the report to create a feature rich, full of information reports. Numerous formats, as you have seen, and we can create a consistent look and feel for all our data reports.